All right, so we're gonna gonna factor because later on we're going to use factoring to help us graph um, polynomials. So the first couple, uh, the first page is gonna be review. So the first kind of factoring you ever learned about was when you could take one thing, a three and a six have a three in common, and x squared and x have an x in common, and you can factor that out. That leaves one x, and six x divided by three x is just two. Remember also that if you multiply this back out, if you distribute it, you should get with what you originally had. Um, this is a special kind of factoring. It's called the difference of squares. Um, it doesn't have a middle term. Notice how it just has a squared, a, sorry, two terms, 2x and 2x, and 3 and 3. But in order to not have the middle term, you need a plus and then a minus. So, exactly when you multiply this out, you get negative 6x and positive 6x, and that's why you don't get that middle term. And this last kind, we get x and x, and we need it to multiply this 16. 4 and 4 multiply to 16, 8 and 2, but if we put minus 4 and minus 4, we get minus 8x. So, we say it's got to multiply to the 16 because these two numbers, the last terms, multiply to 16. And it's got to add to negative 8 because your negative 4x and your negative 4x add to negative 8. And so you could also write this as x minus 4 squared. And lastly, one where they're different, x and x, and 3 and 1, it's got to be 3 and 1, so minus 3, minus 1. What multiplies to 3? 3 and 1, what multiplies, or adds to negative 4, so it's got to be a negative 3 and a negative 1. Alright, so the first kind we, we're we going to talk about is the difference of squares. That's what this one was up here. Difference meaning subtraction, squares meaning perfect squares. Now this one doesn't look like it's different to squares, but we can pull a 3 out first. When you pull out a 3, you get x squared, 48 divided by 3 is 16. And then something squared minus something squared. Any time you do that, it's always going to be plus minus. It's got to multiply to a negative 16. So 4 times a negative 4. And so 4 times a negative 4 is negative 16. And then plus 4x minus 4x adds to 0x because there's no middle term. And that's that factored. Just x squared minus 1, as easy as, well, it's got a x plus 1, x minus 1. Because you get x squared minus x plus x cancels out, minus 1. It can also work this way if we have a couple different variables in here. Um, but so you have to know your, your perfect squares, right? So is there anything that goes into both 81 and 256? Um, 256 is 16 squared. So, if we do 9a and 9a, that'll give us 81a squared. And if we have 16b and 16b, we can do plus, minus. Now, keep in mind, this only works for difference only works for subtraction. All right, and factorable trinomials. So the easiest one, kind of already dealt with, what multiplies to a negative 4 and adds to 3? Four and one, two and two, and so to add to three, it's got to be a positive four and a minus one. So x plus four, x minus one. All right, part B. These are the ones that get a little trickier because this is no longer one. And so the first thing I do is I use the AC method on all of these, and we're going to use it repeatedly here. 
So the AC method is when we multiply 10 times a negative 12. Get negative 120. We've done this before, so this should be review. Um, but what multiplies to negative 120 and adds to negative 7? So, well, there's 12 and 10. They've got to be separated a little bit more than that. So you could say um, 6 and 20. They've got to be right in the middle of there. So what about 8 and... I'm thinking 12 and 20. 15, yeah. Okay. Um, 8 and 15. So if we make it a negative 15 and a positive 8, I'm going to keep the last term the same and split up. Or first and the last term stays the same. Plus 8x minus 12. Notice that this goes down to here, this goes down to here, and then this just splits up into two terms. And then we're going to factor by grouping. So we can pull a 5x out. That leaves 10 divided by 5 is 2x. 15 divided by 5 minus 3. We can pull a 4 out of the second one. That leaves 2x. 12 divided by 4 is 3. These have to match up, otherwise it's not going to work out. If they don't match up, you either haven't taken everything out, or you chose the wrong numbers to begin with. So 2x minus 3 is what they have in common. You can pull those out of both of them, and that leaves 5x plus 4. Please, please, please remember that you can multiply all of these back out again. 2x times 5x is 10x squared, plus 8x minus 15, and minus 12. All right, another. All of these have something in common. They have a 3 in common and an x squared in common. So I'm going to pull that out first. And that leaves x to the 6th plus 5x cubed plus 8. So this one's a little different because it's got x to the 6th and x cubed. But realize that if we split it up, like we usually do, and this is just x cubed and x cubed, because x cubed times x cubed will get us x to the 6th, now we can think of, okay, well, what multiplies to 8? 2 and 4, 1 and 8, and then I just double check that I actually did 15 divided by 3 is 5, 24 divided by 3 is 8, and so this is actually as far as we can take it. But you want to at least try. Okay, so what um, what can we take out of this one? Well, it multiplies to 50 and adds to 15, 10 and 5, so x plus 10 plus 5. AC method again, so we're going to multiply A times C. And how do I know that? Well, if the number out front is just 1, I'm going to do it the long way around. 1 multiplies to 6, 2 and 3, 6 and 1. So I'm going to do 2x squared plus 6x plus 1x if you want plus 3. So 6x plus x, this travels down, this travels down. So you have a 2x you can pull out, and that leaves x plus 3, and that leaves x plus 3, x plus 3 times 2x plus 1. And again, it left the 2x, and when you pull x plus 3 out, it leaves the 1 right there. All right, last one on this page. 2 times 21. Negative um, 42. 7 times 6 is 42. 
negative 1, so negative 7 because those add. So 2x squared plus 6x. What I do when I have this minus here is I usually suck the minus inside. So I just made that plus a negative. If you don't, it will change. If you just leave the minus out front, it will be minus 7x, but it would be minus a negative 21. And so you have to remember to change the sign. Um, pull out the 2x, you get x plus 3. Pull out a negative 7. And you get x. 21 divided by negative 7 is x plus 3. So x plus 3. We have 2x minus 7 left after we pull out the x plus 3. And there you have your basic factoring techniques. That's what we knew. So now on to some new methods where we don't quite have... Um, so if you had x cubed and we have four terms, anytime you have four terms, try factoring by grouping. Um, we've done this before, so it's nothing new except that it's starting with x cubed. And so we can pull out a 2x squared, and that leaves 2x minus 3. And the second one we here we can pull out a 5, and that leaves 2x minus 3. And 2x minus 3 is what they have in common, so pull that out. And that leaves 2x squared plus 5. Anytime you have an x squared in here, you want to see if you can take it any further, but this cannot be factored any further. Alright, next one. Group. Again, I'm going to suck in the negative here. Pull out an x squared. That leaves 2x x squared divided by x squared is 1. Pull out a negative 9. It leaves a positive 2x plus 1. 2x plus 1 is what they have in common. Alright, so the most common error here is that we leave this alone. x squared minus 9 is that special type of factoring. Call it the difference of squares. So x plus 3, x minus 3. Factor it one more time. Anytime you have the two terms, something squared minus something squared. Same thing goes on this next one. Four terms, factor by grouping. Anytime you have four terms. Sometimes it's helpful to rearrange just to see if you can pull something out. x plus 7, pull out a negative 9 x plus 7. So they've got that x plus 7 in common, so this one's very similar to the last one. Don't leave the x squared minus 9 alone. x plus 3, x minus 3. Alright, sum and difference of cubes. So this is the new one. When you have something cubed plus something cubed, and something cubed minus something cubed, um, they have special factoring techniques. And so, notice it's a binomial times a trinomial. Two terms, three terms. Notice that this term is the same. Plus, plus. Minus, minus. So this one's the same. If this is a plus, this one's the opposite. And this one's the opposite. And then this one is always positive. Always positive. So, somebody taught me soap, same, opposite, always positive, as a way to remember it. So, notice that this is x cubed and this is 2 cubed. So I'm going to have x plus y. What was it that was cubed? So this is x and plus 2. And so, x squared... minus xy, so minus x times y, so 2x, this times this, plus y squared, or 2 squared, which is 4. There you have it. Let's try it with the minus. 
So this is 3 cubed, and x to the 6 is x squared cubed. x squared times x squared times x squared. And this one is 4 cubed is 64. So our first binomial is going to be 3x squared minus 4. We're going to use the minus one this time because there's a minus in between. And then x squared is this term squared, so 3x squared squared. That's 9x to the fourth. And then 3x squared times 4. Notice that this is always going to be positive. Ignore the negative when you go to multiply these two together. So you get 12x squared. And then 4 squared on the back plus 16. And that is how you do sum and difference of cubes. Why don't you guys try the next two? Really, try them out. Alright, so this one um, we can pull something out. So, they both are even numbers. If I pull out a 2 and an x, I get 27 x cubed plus 64 so this is like 3x cubed and this is like 4 cubed so we're gonna have a binomial times a trinomial plus minus plus same opposite always positive and we're going to have 3x and 4. If you need to, just take the cubed root of 27. But it's good to know your perfect cubes. Um, and then 3x times 3x. 3x squared. So 9x squared minus these two multiplied together. 3x times 4, which is 12x times 4 squared. All right, in the next one, we've got 2x squared being cubed minus 125 is 5 cubed. So we're going to have a minus 2x squared minus 5. And then this is 2x squared cubed, not cubed, squared. 4x to the 4th plus 2x squared times 5, the xy part, 10x squared, and then 5 squared on the back, just like the y squared. What I want you to realize is that if you multiply this out, you will get what we started with. So take the time to do it, especially in a test situation, um, to double check your answer. All right, so some of our homework is going to ask us, it's going to set it equal to zero and ask you to solve. And so if x times y equals zero, then either x equals zero or y equals zero. That's the only way two numbers can multiply to zero. One of them has to be zero. For example, if this equals 0, then either x plus 3 equals 0, and x equals negative 3. And we've done this before, that's why it's... And then 2x minus 4 equals 0, so 2x equals 4, and x equals 2. If you add the 4 and divide by the 2. And there you have it. So, the problems get harder after this, as we remember all of our solving techniques from the past chapter.